What's up guys, we are back with a big day of MLB action here on Thursday, May 2nd. We had a great bounce back day there on Wednesday. Things went great for us. We won our first three in a row. We had a big bet on the Kansas City Royals, plus 116. That came through. We saw the Chicago Cubs. They won. We had them at minus 113. That was a pretty solid one. We saw the Cubs take down that win one to nothing. So getting a little bit of a variance in our favor there in one run games. And also everybody who was on the under in that game cashed that one as well. We also hit a sizable underdog. We had the Washington Nationals plus one. 142. They also won that game one to nothing. So we're feeling pretty great. We've got one game still going on right now. We've got Cleveland and Houston tied up at two runs apiece going into the top of the 10th inning. So we're definitely drawing very live in that one to have a 4-0 sweep. Let's get after it again with a kind of short Thursday sleet in MLB, but we're tossing in some NBA playoff action at the end just to round things out. First, let's take a second and hit that like button to show some support to the channel and all the work we're putting in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. We hit a pretty big milestone, guys. We crossed over 20,000 subscribers there on May 1st, so shout out to everyone for helping make that happen. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today, and we will give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day. We've got the Colorado Rockies taking on the Miami Marlins. The Rockies come into this game, they're fresh off of a fourth straight loss. They lost the first two games of the series. They lost yesterday 4-1, to one, so not exactly keeping it uh, super close in that one. The Rockies are going to be handing the ball in this one to Peter Lambert. He comes in this game, he's going to be looking for his first result of the season, and he's making his first start of the year. So far, overall, he's got a 4.67 ERA, so not exactly elite, but his last time out, he was very good in two and two thirds against the San Diego Padres. He gave up no hits, no earned runs. He also didn't have a walk or a strikeout in there. So definitely pitching to contact and getting the job done in his outing before that though, guys, he got absolutely shelled by the Seattle Mariners in three innings of work. He gave up six earned runs and had five strikeouts, but six earned runs, that's not really uh, getting the job done, especially against a light hitting Mariners team. So we're not super confident in what we're going to see from him. He has had some good outings this season in like middle relief and like kind of long relief but that outing against Seattle did not exactly fill us with optimism here. And he's going to be making his first start of the year. So I think we'll see him either pitch really well or kind of poorly. Looking at the Rockies offense, it hasn't looked great right now. I mean, this season in general has been kind of having a tough time. Their last game, they only scored a single run. The game before that, they scored six runs, but managed to lose that game. So things not exactly looking great. They're 24th in the majors in terms of runs scored, 13th in team batting average, batting 244 as a squad. They're only 19th in the majors with a slugging percentage of 370 which is a little bit embarrassing when you're playing all of your home games at Coors Field. You would think those numbers could be a little bit better, and their team on-base percentage has them well below average also. We've seen Ryan McManon get off to a pretty good start, but other than that, not a lot of positives to point to here for the Colorado Rockies hitters, and they're going to need to score some runs here going up against the Marlins, who are playing pretty well right now. They've won the first two games of this series, and they're handing the ball in this one to Edward Cabrera. He's 1-1 one one with a 5.28 ERA, so not exactly having a blast out there right now. His first start of the year against the Giants was great, but then he gave up three earned runs in, seven, in five innings of work to the Cubs, and then he got shelled by the Washington Nationals. Not exactly the kind of team you're looking to get shelled by. I mean, he gave up a home run in that game, five earned runs, six runs overall, and four and a third innings, so... Not a fantastic outing for him. He's definitely looking to bounce back and do a little bit better in this one. The Marlins bats in general, while they've looked good over the first two games of the series, combining to score 11 runs, they haven't exactly looked great this year. They're 25th in the majors with 111 runs scored. That's not really getting the job done. But most concerningly, guys, their team on base percentage is close to dead last, and so is their team slugging percentage. When you're only getting on base at a 278 clip, like, Nothing positive is going to be happening for your offense. It's hard to move guys around base when you've got absolutely nobody on base. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Rockies are sizable underdogs, guys. They're plus 154. I think that's mostly due to their pitching situation. The Marlins are minus 170, and at least they have a real starter out there on the mound. But... Guys, I don't know. This sounds a little bit tough to me. The over-under for this game is sitting at 8, so not a big number by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not like these teams have been hitting the cover off the ball. I mean, I guess they did in Game 1 of this series, so if you wanted to give the over a little bit of a look, I could get behind that. Neither team has significant trends pointing towards the over-under in this situation. We do see Miami is like a Major League worst 4-15 and 15 against the run line. They're just terrible, terrible, terrible against the run line. But are we really interested in taking Colorado plus 1.5 to get them at minus 140? That doesn't sound super appealing to me. If you had any faith here in the Rockies, I would just take them plus 154. 
But guys, this is a pretty tough spot. I think I'm leaning towards the over in this game, if nothing else, but I'm not going to be on uh, which side in this game. I mean, if you want to take the Marlins, I guess go for it, but not too interested in that. I'll take a little taste of the over. Next up, guys, we're in kind of a weird spot. We've got the Baltimore Orioles taking on the New York Yankees, playing in Baltimore. The Yankees come into this game fresh off of a win, so they've salvaged at least one win, and now they can go for a split in this one. They won 2 to nothing there in Game 3 after dropping the first two games of the series. It's been a very low-scoring series in general. The Yankees are going to be handing the ball on this one to Carlos Rondon. He's off to a very good 2-1 and one start. 2.48 ERA is nothing to turn your nose up at. His last time out against Milwaukee Brewers, he was fairly dominant. Only two hits and a single earned run over six innings work. He had eight strikeouts, only one walk in that one. The start before that, he only gave up a single hit to the Oakland A's over seven innings. He's just looked very, very good right now, and he has to feel pretty decent going up against the Baltimore Orioles. They haven't really been hitting the cover off the ball right now, so that probably makes them feel a little bit better, but a big concern right now is the Yankees' offense. After those, like, outbursts against the Milwaukee Brewers, they just haven't been able to find it. They scored 0-2, and now two runs in this series against the Orioles, so scoring a grand total of four runs over three games, not a great look. This is supposed to be an offensive powerhouse, guys, and that is just not coming true right now. We've seen Juan Soto get off to a good start, but other than that, that's kind of where the positives end. Despite this team seeming like they can't score any runs. They're still fourth in the majors in team on base percentage, 11th in the majors in batting average, and ninth in slugging percentage. So we expect them to find a way to like start scoring runs again eventually. It's just tough to know when that's going to be because it certainly has not been the case so far this series against the Orioles who come into this game kind of a weird spot because they're undecided on who they're actually going to have out there on the mound. Baltimore in general this season has been pretty solid in terms of pitching. I mean their batting average allowed is only 12th in the majors, so that's a little bit above average their earned run average combined as a group is 11th in the major so I think we can kind of uh, trust them to piece together some sort of decent start even if they're having to run a bunch of bullpen guys out there I think they're kind of capable of that and they're definitely capable of putting up some runs although that hasn't so much been the case here lately still though they're tied for third in the majors in terms of runs scored they're first in the majors number one overall in slugging percentage this team when they hit the ball they hit it hard and they're batting over 250 this season which is sixth in the majors so you can definitely count on them to be putting up some runs and the odds makers agree with us we see over unders of nine and a half or nine but the Orioles are underdogs in this game. They're plus 125. We see the Yankees at minus 146. And with Rondon out there on the mound, uh, that makes sense to me, guys. I mean, it's tough to back the Yankees right now with how they're struggling to score runs. So maybe we want to look at the over-under in this game. But with the Yankees being a massive under team and the Orioles being up, maybe not massive, but definitely trending towards the over squad, that's a little bit concerning for me. But when you look at the pitching matchup here, when you look at Rondon out there on the mound, I think we're going to see Baltimore struggle a little bit at the plate so under nine and a half is probably going to be the play here for me if you wanted to take the Yankees minus 146 that also makes sense but guys I just don't have enough trust in their bats right now so go ahead and give me under nine and a half on this one I think this has a solid shot here on this short slate and making it into our pinned comment pick I know these teams are due to score some runs but man if you've been watching these plate appearances from these guys Things are just not looking great right now. Next up, guys, with the Chicago Cubs going on the road to take on the New York Mets. The Cubs have won two out of three to start this series off, so they have to feel pretty good about that. Only a one-run win there in Game 3 of this series. It was kind of a controversial call there to give the win there in Game 3 to the Cubs in the bottom of the ninth, a play at the plate. The catcher blocked the plate a little bit, and his hands seemed to come up. I'm not going to argue too much, but we'll definitely take that win and put it on the board. The Cubs are going to be handing the ball in this one to Ben Brown, who is 0-1 on the season with a 4.30 ERA, so not exactly the beginning of the year he was hoping for, but he's been in and out of the bullpen, in and out of the starting rotation, and yeah, it's just been kind of a wild ride for him so far. His last time starting, which was also his last outing, it was against the Boston Red Sox, and it was part of that 17 to nothing game. We saw the Red Sox lay there on the Cubs, so that doesn't exactly fill us with a ton of optimism, but in his start before that, which was sandwiched after a couple bullpen games, he looked very good against the Arizona Diamondbacks, so Guess it's kind of been a tale of two starts for this guy. I don't know what to exactly expect from this tall right-hander. He's a young guy. Uh, consistency could definitely be a concern in this one, but we'll see what he can do. We'll also see what the Cubs' bats can do because they have been extremely quiet here lately. They are still ninth in the majors in terms of run scored, 12th in the majors and on base percentage, but in this series, guys, it just has not looked good. They scored three runs in the first game, two in the second game, and only one here in the third game. So they're definitely going to need to do something to come back alive here. I'm not sure what the problem is. Do they need to sacrifice a chicken or do some sort of bat a 
reviving ritual, but they need to do something because they're just not hitting the ball right now. They're going to need to score probably more than one run in this game going up against the New York Mets, who are going to be pretty ticked off after that last game. The Mets are now down to 15 and 15 on the season. They're hitting the ball in this one to Adrian Hauser. Not really the guy you uh, look to to really stem the tide right now. He's 0-3 with an 8.37 ERA. His last time out against the St. Louis Cardinals, not a good hitting team. He only went four and a third, gave up nine hits and six earned runs. Getting shelled by the St. Louis Cardinals is not great. I mean, getting shelled by the LA Dodgers like he did in the start before that is kind of expected, but in general, this guy has not had a good time this season against teams that can hit. Do the Cubs really uh, qualify as a team that can hit, though? I don't really know. That's kind of a tough look, but neither really is the Mets. They're not hitting the ball very well right now at all. They're 18th in the majors in terms of run scored, 13 in the on-base percentage, but... Guys, they are not putting up runs either. They scored zero runs, obviously, in this last game, four in the game before that, and only one in the game before that. And their series against the Cardinals wasn't necessarily an offensive full series coming out of the Mets. So we don't have a ton of positives to look at for them right now. I mean, Pete Alonso has hit eight home runs, but he's only batting 228. This team is just not a good offensive team right now, it doesn't look like. And it's kind of surprising to me to see the numbers where they are. We've got an over-under of eight and a half. This game being kind of a coin flip in general does make sense to me, but... Even though both these teams have slight trends towards the under, guys, we are leaning kind of aggressively towards the over in this game. Obviously, neither team is hitting the ball well right now, but they're due for some regression to like what we would see from normal major league hitters. And we also have close to zero faith in either one of these starters. If you're forcing me to pick a side here, I guess I would probably side with the Cubs, but I'm not going to be on the side. We're going to be on the over in this game. That's, I think, the best value in this one. Kind of a tough spot, though. Moving right along here, guys, we got the San Francisco Giants going on the road to take on the Boston Red Sox. We see San Francisco struggling right now. They lost the first two games of these, this series. They lost 6-2 to two in the last one, so can't feel too good. They're all the way down to 14-17 and 17 on the season, so things are not really working out for them. They're handing the ball, though, to Kyle Harrison, hoping he can turn things around. He's 2-1 and one with a 4.09 ERA, so not terrible at all. His last start out, he shut out the Pittsburgh Pirates. They are a slumping offensive team, but we'll give him some credit here for pitching well in that game for sure. The start before that, he was serviceable, but not great against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And start before that, he did hold the Marlins to only three runs. So he's kind of trending in a positive direction. We've also interestingly seen a slumping Giants team win in the last three times that he pitched. So they've got to be holding on to some kind of hope for that one. And they're probably holding on to hope that they'll start scoring some more runs. This team is not looking good at the plate right now, guys. They're down to 23rd in the majors in terms of runs scored. 15th in team batting average, not great at all. I mean, that's league average, so I guess they'll take that at this point, but not what you're looking for. They're down to 20th in the majors and on base percentage. These are just not the kind of numbers you want to see if you're expecting to score some runs as a team. And while this squad isn't exactly projected to be a great offensive team, I doubt they thought it was going to be as tough as it has been lately. Not really what they're looking for. I mean, they haven't scored more than four runs since God knows when. So we're not too excited about the Giants hitters right now, and they're going to need to score some runs going up against a Red Sox team that's coming on strong right now. They've won their last four in a row. They're handing the ball in this one to Josh Winkowski. He's going to be making his third start of the year so far, and he has not been going deep into games. I mean, he started things off in the bullpen, so maybe they'll look to stretch him out a little bit in this one, but it seems kind of unlikely to me. Although Boston has just been ravaged by pitching injuries this season so far, so we'll see what they can actually do. His last time out, he was part of that 17 to nothing win against the Chicago Cubs. He started that game, he went three innings, gave him only three hits and no runs, so that'll definitely work. And his start before that against the Pirates, he went three and a third. He gave it three hits and one run in that one, so not exactly elite, but I think at this point, the Red Sox will take whatever they can get out of their pitchers because it's been just a bloodbath over there. The Red Sox hitters, in general, have been trying to pick up the slack, and they've been scoring relatively well recently. Recently. I mean, we're only going to give them so much credit for that 17 to nothing win. I mean, when you're scoring runs at the end of a huge blowout, it's not really the biggest deal, but this squad seems like they've figured some things out at the plate. I mean, they're eighth in the majors and on base percentage with a 324 mark. That'll definitely work. Seventh in slugging percentage, 10th in batting average. Like all of these will work out pretty well. And that's all added up to get them to 12th in the majors in terms of runs scored. We haven't seen any one player really get off to an insane start. I mean, Tyler O'Neill had that very start early on, but that hasn't really like carried through. So we'll see what he can do and he's missed some time and stuff like that so we're not exactly banking on anything like uh, Tyler O'Neill really carrying the load necessarily but just in general Red Sox offense 
definitely pointed in a positive direction and that's one of the reasons this game is kind of looking like a coin flip we see boston minus 104 the giants are minus 105 which is a little bit surprising here with kyle harrison on the mound i mean he's had his moments this season but i don't know what we really expect him to do well here against the boston red sox although how deep can we expect their starter to go into this game and with their bullpen and their entire pitching staff so ravaged by injuries it seems like a bit of a tough look. Looking at the trends for this game, we see that uh, the Giants are 15, 14, and 1 to the other under. Boston is 14, 13, and 3 to the under, so not big trends there for sure. And I don't really trust either one of these starting pitchers right now. Guys, I'm leaning towards the Red Sox minus 104 playing at home. They're just playing better right now, and the Giants' offense is looking terrible. And I have a little bit of faith here in Winkowski to pitch well, at least in limited innings. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to be on the Red Sox in this game. Will it make it into the pin comment play here on this short slate it's a possibility but make sure you check down there to make sure moving right along here guys we have the washington nationals going up against the texas rangers the nationals came through for us as significant underdogs yesterday to win one to nothing so we'll definitely take that feels pretty good the nationals are going to be handing the ball in this one to mitchell parker he comes into this game 2-0 with a 1.69 era so you can't ask for a much better beginning of the season than he has had although guys his last time out he cooled off a little bit i mean it feels like pitchers are just taking days off against the miami marlins he went only four innings gave us six hits and only one earned run so obviously not a disaster start his team won that game 11 to 4 so definitely definitely take that but in general this season he's been pitching really really well he did well against the astros he opened his season with a solid outing against the dodgers so you can't really ask for much more than that from a very young guy he's a tall left-hander and he's looked good here to start the year there's no doubt the nationals come into this game they're not exactly hitting the cover off the ball guys they won yesterday one to nothing so i mean you know we'll take it but not exactly a dominant performance but they're kind of rounding into form a little bit i mean they scored well against the marlins in that series and they've they've got some pieces in there they can put some things together luis garcia jr is off to a good start cj abrams is off to a good start but there's a reason that they're only 21st in the majors in terms of run scored 21st in team batting average they're also 21st in slugging percentage, but they're getting on base a little bit better. Their on base percentage is 312, which is good for 18th in the majors. Still, guys, not exactly the uh, kind of offense that you're going to throw them a parade for. Not putting up a ton of runs, and they're going to need to score some runs here against the Texas Rangers, who I don't expect to get shut out again. Although, I mean, Mitchell Parker has got the stuff to pitch a shutout, so we're not going to discount that completely as a possibility. The Rangers are now 16 and 15 on the season. They took that one to nothing loss, but in game one of this series, they won seven to one, so they're probably feeling okay about that. They're handing the ball in this one to Nathan Eovaldi. He comes in this game one and two with a three ERA. His last time out, he was very, very good against the Cincinnati Reds, although he did have five walks in that game, so that's not great, but six innings, giving up only one earned run, that'll definitely work. The outing before that against the Braves, he looked decent but not dominant. Before that against the Astros, he got knocked around pretty aggressively. So he's been a little bit of a mixed bag, but generally speaking, relatively solid right now. The Rangers' bats, on the other hand, haven't looked fantastic th lately i mean i guess they got off to a hot start for sure but things have cooled off a bit they're down to 14th in the majors and run scored 11th in the majors and on base percentage their uh, team batting average numbers still have them in the top 10 and so does their slugging percentage but do we really expect them to stick there i don't know i see that seems like kind of a big ass to me i mean we see josh smith now leading the team in batting average so I don't know, guys. It seems like their bats just in general are cooling off, and they're not scoring as well. Looking at the numbers in this game, we see the Rangers are huge favorites. They're minus 200 in this one. That doesn't really make sense to me, guys. Not with the starter the Nationals have out there on the mound. We're taking another flyer on the Nationals, it looks like, guys. They're plus 180 in this one. Can they win two in a row here? That seems like kind of a big ask. I mean, obviously, the Rangers' offense is in a bounce-back spot, but I definitely like the Nationals plus 180 in this game. Also, guys, if you want to take a look at the under 8.5, we see both teams are showing some slight trends towards the under and we really like at least washington starter if not the rangers starter too so i think the under is definitely in play in this one but guys load it up again i guess give me the nationals at an even bigger number in this one plus 180 i think they win this game enough to make this bet a good value Moving right along, guys, we're looking at the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Houston Astros. We did very unfortunately see Cleveland end up winning that game in extra innings to cost us our perfect 4-0 day, so we end up 3-1 on the day, but hey, we'll definitely take it. That's kind of annoying, though, to see Houston come back, tie it up at two, game, two runs apiece, and then end up losing in extras. 
losing games, losing bets and extra innings never feels very good. But regardless, looking at the Guardians in this one, they're 20 and 10 on the season. They're one of the best teams in baseball and they're handing the ball in this game to Logan Allen. He's three and one on the season with a 5.46 ERA. So not exactly a great ERA. And he hasn't exactly been showing his best stuff out there. I mean, over his last four starts. So every start except for his first one of the year, he's given up at least three runs. Actually, he's given up three runs only one time. The other time has been four, four and five. And he hasn't been going up against teams that really hit the ball that well. I mean, he got hit around by the Chicago White Sox. That is not a great look. He's kind of a short guy. I mean, I don't know. Maybe we just don't trust his stuff that much, but not having the best time right now. Obviously, that's not the case for the Cleveland Bats. I mean, they only scored three runs in game two of this series, but they were going up against Verlander as the starter, so we're not going to freak out about their offense right now. They're fifth in the majors in runs scored, ninth in the majors in on-base percentage. This is a team that can definitely find a way to put up some runs. We saw Stephen Kwan get the go-ahead double in the 10th inning, so just in general, this team, they can definitely hit the ball, no doubt about that, and they're going to be looking to uh, keep this thing rolling after some late inning heroics there in game two. They're going to need to uh, keep on scoring some runs, probably going to need to score more than three in this one, going up against the Astros, who had their three-game winning streak snapped there. They're 10 and 19 on the season, so they can't feel great about that one, and they also probably feel pretty freaking bad here, handing the ball to Spencer Aragetti. He's 0-3 with a near 11 ERA, guys. That is not great. In his last start against the Chicago Cubs, he gave up four earned runs on seven hits over three and two-thirds, so not an elite start by any stretch of the imagination. He did have seven strikeouts in that game, but guys, he has not been having a good time this season at all, as evidenced by his pretty terrible numbers. Yeah, just not a lot of positive things to say about him right now, and also not a ton of positives to say about the Astros offense. Obviously, they struggled yesterday. We've seen Jose Altuve be really the lone bright spot for this offense. They continue to get on base at a crazy number. I mean, they're fifth in the majors and on-base percentage, third in batting average, and fifth in slugging percentage. We expect this team to eventually, I guess, start scoring more runs, but it's been such a tough look here lately. Guys, we're not going to mess around with this one too much. We're going to go with the team that is clearly the far better team, even though Logan Allen isn't a starter that we have a ton of faith in. The fact that you can get Cleveland at plus 115 in this game just seems kind of crazy to me. We're going to be on the Guardians plus 115 in this one. This is definitely going to be one of our pin comment plays. We trust Cleveland an awful lot more than we trust Houston right now and just in general this season. So give us the Guardians at a plus number. I think that's always going to be a pretty good look. And looking at the over-under in this game, we see that uh, team, the, both teams have like mixed results against the number. And I don't have a crazy amount of faith either way in either one of these starters. So we're not going to be on the over under in this game. Moving over here to the NBA side of things, guys, we've got two playoff games to break down. The first one is the Milwaukee Bucks going on the road to take on the Indiana Pacers. We now see Indiana leading this series three games to two, which is honestly kind of embarrassing that this series isn't over. That was a crazy loss they took there in game five. Cannot believe that they lost that game with both Giannis and Dame sitting out. Very, very embarrassing performance from what has honestly been a very inconsistent team all season long. In that game five loss, we saw the Pacers jump out to an eight point lead in the first quarter and then just basically go to sleep. We saw Halliburton not be up to his normal standard. We saw Siakam really have a bad game. There's just no bright spots really to find here for the Pacers at all. And we saw the Bucks go absolutely nuts. Bobby Portis was trying to make up for that stupid, stupid ejection that he had the other night and he put up 29 points. We also saw 29 points from Middleton. Every single Bucks starter scored easily in double figures and put up big plus minus numbers. Their bench even looked very good in this game. They shot under 40% from the field, or they shot under 40% from three in this game and still won in comfortable fashion. They dominated the boards 44 to 36. Like this was just an absolute stinker here from the Indiana Pacers. So how much faith can we really have in this team to bounce back right now? I'm not really sure. It's going to be very important here to monitor the Bucks injury situation. I mean, do we think that Giannis or Dame will play in this game? It seems pretty sketchy to me. We'll see. I mean, they might even be confirmed. Okay, so technically it's not confirmed for Dame. He's officially doubtful for this game, but you're not going to want to mess around there with an Achilles injury. And with uh, Giannis also doubtful for this one, it seems like the Bucks are going to be extremely shorthanded once again. So this is, a, this is a tough spot. It's pretty annoying to have to go back to the Indiana Pacers after seeing how bad they played there in their last game. But 
We're very likely to be on Indiana minus eight and a half because they are 23, 18, and two against the spread at home and have a chance to close this series out against the skeleton crew for the Bucks here. We also see Middleton is being bothered by that ankle injury, so that's definitely a concern. I expect him to play, but how effective will he be? We also see the Bucks are only 17 and 25 against the spread on the road this season, so that's not a great number. And one of the biggest numbers we're looking at in this game, guys, we see the Pacers. They're 24, 11, and two against the spread when they're coming off a loss. I expect a big bounce back performance from them. And this one, this is likely to be one of our pinned comment plays as uh, gut-wrenching as that might be, but I think we're going to take it. The over-under in this game is at 212 and a half. I don't really have a ton of interest in that one. I mean, maybe if you wanted to take a little bit of the over with both teams playing a little bit better, you could do that. But guys, we're just going to be on the Pacers to win this game. I think they win by double digits, but uh, once again, I'm going to reiterate, this does not feel good. This is just a numbers-based play, and you gotta you got to play the system plays when they come up. Next up, guys, we get the New York Knicks going on the road now to take on the Philadelphia 76ers. With the Knicks currently up three games to two, we saw a historic, historic level collapse there from the New York Knicks. We had them minus three and a half as one of our core plays, and they found a way to lose that game in overtime after being in a position to win and cover constantly. They were up five points in overtime right out of the gate, so they really should have covered and won in the regulation, and they really should have covered and won in overtime too, but man, just some terrible, terrible decisions there down the stretch and they just were unable to get the job done. I mean, how many more opportunities are they going to have this series where Jokic only shoots six free throws? I wouldn't say a ton. We actually saw the Knicks shoot more free throws than the 76ers in that game, and yeah, guys, just in general, the Knicks did not shoot well in that one at all. They had to lean very, very aggressively on Brunson once again. The Knicks only played seven guys in that game. It was very good to see Mitchell Robinson come out and play well in all of his minutes. He only played 25 minutes, but he looked good out there defending Embiid, and just in general, he looked okay moving there's still clearly some issues going on there but the fact that he can go at all is a big big deal in this matchup they're going to need him to play really well and guys i'm a little bit scared of fatigue setting in here a bit for the next i mean obviously they've got plenty of time off in between games here but we saw four Knicks starters play 50 minutes or more or three Knicks starters play 50 minutes or more that's got to wear on you a little bit i mean i guess they're kind of used to this it went on all season long so hopefully they're in good enough shape that they won't break down and have some sort of injuries but it was definitely definitely a tough game we saw maxi play absolutely out of his mind down the stretch he had some costly mistakes but man he knocked down those crazy shots when he needed to and basically single-handedly pulled his team to this win. Embiid is looking like an absolute shell of himself out there. He did post a triple-double, which is hilarious. It might have been his worst game of the series overall, but he had 19 points, 16 rebounds, and 10 assists. He also had nine turnovers in the game. He's just not himself out there. He's barely moving around at all. Like, very, very tough looks out there for Embiid. So I don't think we can expect too much from him here in this game as well. A lot is going to fall on Maxi's shoulders again. So we're leaning towards the Knicks on the road in this one, plus three and a half. I think they find a way to end this series here without having to go back to Madison Square Garden. But this is far from a lock for me. Looking at the under over under for this game, we see that the Knicks are a slight over team on the road and the 76ers are slight over team at home. We've seen one game go to the over in Philly in this series, and we saw one game go to the under. So this is kind of a tough spot, but I'm leaning a little bit here towards the over just slightly. I think we'll see some decent shooting from both teams and enough to get over that very small number, but neither one of these is going to be a core play for me. But if you're des if you're desperate to bet this game, I like the Knicks plus three and a half a little bit, and I like over 199 and a half just a little bit. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit that like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate thanks for watching you can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action